Howdy my totally as always to be the gamers we're back with you guessed it another video today we're gonna to be talking about some upcoming games somehow we're already halfway through 2024 time is absolutely flying and there have been some fantastic games this year but that's in the past today we look forward to the future to the second half of 2024 and all the games that are coming out then there's a bunch of great looking games and so for today I thought I would talk about the top 25 upcoming games for the second half of 2024 we're going to be going in real release order and these are the games that I think you should keep your eye on these are the games that are the most hype for me and you can let me know down below if there are any games I miss that you are really excited for I'm also going to be only looking at games really with release dates there are plenty of games with 2024 release windows but are they gonna actually come out this year who knows I don't is Indiana Jones gonna come out this year is the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake coming out this year no idea and since I have no idea I'm not including them on the list I'm looking at games that we know as of this moment that are released in 2024 with a confirmed release date. I'm also not going to be looking at any re-releases outside of one exception, but just know that MVC collection has me super hype. It's finally back baby, oh yeah, I'm real excited for that, but it's not going to be on the list since it isn't a new game. But anyway, this intro has gone on long enough, let's talk about those upcoming games. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, we got the Patreon and the super thanks. Any support is truly greatly appreciated. If you made it to this part, you're awesome, you're going to do great today. Let's get on with it. And so our next game might be a game you've never even heard of, and that is Angerfoot, an upcoming first person shooter developed by Free Lives and published by Devolver Digital. Free Lives did develop a few other games like Bro Force and the highly acclaimed Genesis jousting but this is a bit different from their other work like I mentioned it is a first-person shooter a very fast-paced first-person shooter seeing you play as a rogue vigilante who kicks and shoots their way through quote shit city that's really the name of the city you get to clear out the slums the sewers the city in general of merciless gangsters the game has a very in-your-face wacky attitude where yeah you're pretty much just killing everything that moves you get to just kick the shit out of people and gun them down with a bunch of weapons I think we're finally going to have a foot that will match Duke Nukem's mighty boot. I mean, the whole game is basically centered around the foot. You even get to customize what shoe you're going to wear. It's literally called Anger Foot. Yeah, if there was a game that was going to match Duke Nukem's mighty boot, it was going to be something like this. The game looks like one of those fast paced games where it really emphasizes like reflexes and situational awareness and really just that fast decision making. And yeah, that sounds very similar to another FPS that came out earlier this year known as Mullet Mad Jack. I haven't tried that yet. I want to try it. It looks pretty fun and this game looks really fun also. I love fast paced first person shooters that challenge me and make me do a bunch of quick decision making and sometimes you'll just get gunned the fuck down and it looks like it could be decently challenging. We'll see if my middle aged stoner reflexes can put up with this game but I'm liking everything I'm seeing so far. It looks like a tight, fun, fast paced first person shooter with a really good attitude. Again, that attitude and vibe is very solid. It looks like a fun time. Is it going to win any awards? Is it going to be the best indie game you play this year? Probably not. but. It looks like a decent few hours and it's coming pretty soon. It's releasing on July 11th. And so our next game is another game that might not be on your radar and it is Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess. This game is actually developed and published by Capcom, but it's not their usual affair. It's not Resident Evil. It's not a fighting game. It's actually a genre they rarely, if ever, touch. It's a action strategy game. I wasn't too sure what kind of game this was when they first showed it off, but now they've shown off a bit more of it, and yeah, it kind of makes sense. It's played from a third-person perspective, but then it has a bunch of elements from RTS and tower defense games. I feel like it's been a good while since a tower defense game released. I could be totally wrong, but I feel like they are nowhere near as common as they were, say, 10 years ago, and so it is refreshing to see that. You'll be controlling this character known as So, who has to protect this divine maiden. You gotta purge and cleanse these villages of, quote, defilement and leave the legendary Mount Kafuku in peace. And so, yeah, you're really going to have to be defending this village, it looks like. The gameplay seems to be divided up where there's daytime gameplay where everything's about preparing and then there's the nighttime gameplay where the village gets invaded. You get to do some attacks yourself but you are going to have other villagers to help you and you can even place them down wherever you want. Kind of reminded me of Plants vs Zombies, that's not a very good comparison. Honestly this kind of gameplay reminded me a bit of Brutal Legend where there was like this real time strategy mode thrown in there, it was kind of unexpected and it was like an action real time strategy game. Maybe that's also not a great comparison. I'm really curious to see how this game shakes out. I feel like it could either be pretty decent 
or it's just not going to come together. Capcom has a lot more wins than losses, especially lately. It's coming to Game Pass day one, and while I don't think it's going to rock the world, I'm hoping it's a good one. It's going to be releasing July 19th. And so here we have a game I've been looking forward to for quite some time, several years now, and that is Earth Defense Force 6, commonly known as EDF 6. It is finally coming over to the West on July 25th. Now, the EDF series for the uninitiated is one of the craziest series of video games you will ever find. These are third person shooters where they drop you into these pretty big environments and tell you to just annihilate all the bugs. A ton of bugs show up and then just other creatures and aliens show up. You get some big dumbass weapons, you blow up buildings, it's campy as hell, it's goofy as shit, and it's just awesome. It is some of the most fun I've had with legit any video game. I have put well over 50, 60 hours in Earth Defense Force 4.1 and 5 and I can really recommend both of them. They're just great games. And 6 looks to continue that trend. It does take place after 5, and it looks like you're going to be killing a lot more creatures. There's tons of new enemies, weapons, and the story appears to be as cheesy and wild as the previous games. They even got VTubers in here now, and... I just cannot wait for this game. You can play the entire game cooperatively and I've seen plenty of clips of the Japanese version and it really does look crazy and so I'm like, yes, it's finally coming to America. I think it's going to be great. I know a lot of people probably aren't going to even know when this game releases or even hear about it and it's going to be one of those best under the radar games and if you are watching this video and you have even the slightest interest in this game, I recommend you check it out because you won't find a more out there crazier game than EDF 6. And you know, Helldivers 2, that's a pretty awesome game. It's much more refined and it's a better live service than EDF, but it's not as crazy as EDF 6. This one is like maybe my most hype game of the year. And I'm not even kidding. It just looks like so much fun. Alright, you know this list is pretty out there if we're going from EDF6 to our next game, The Crush House. Releasing on August 9th exclusively on PC, The Crush House is this weird adventure game where you have to film and produce 1999's hottest reality TV show where it's like this dating show. Yes, it's kind of like a dating show simulator. It's pretty out there and there's not a lot of games like it and there's not a lot that are in first person. Yes, this is a thirst person shooter and it is developed by Nereal and published by Devolver Digital. And all I gotta say is I'm all about it. I love weird and wacky games like this and I can tell that there's clearly a lot of love and care put into this. There's clearly something else going on here. It's not just a dating show. It seems like there's some kind of dark mystery afoot or something like that. It seems to be very narrative and relationship based and I'm all about it. I'm really just interested and intrigued in this game. I'm probably going to play it with my partner. I think she's also really into this stuff. As someone who's watched way too much Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, all those stupid dating shows and all that garbage, yeah, this is the kind of game I guess I would like. I don't think this game is going to be for everyone. I don't think it's going to be one of the best games of the year, but it's certainly going to be one of the most interesting. Okay, so a game that is actually highly anticipated is Black Myth Wukong coming to PC and PS5 on August 20th. Now, Black Myth Wukong was announced years and years ago as like one of the first Unreal Engine 5 games and it looked incredible. Like, I remember seeing this going, wow, this is like maybe the greatest looking game I've ever seen graphically. And yeah, a few years later, you know, it isn't that anymore, but it still is a very good looking game. It's still incredibly impressive. The game is based on the Chinese novel Journey to the West, and it is an action role-playing game. It seems more like a Souls-like, and apparently there's like a shit ton of bosses in it, but it looks like a pretty competent Souls-like. The combat looks really fast and fluid and like there's a good moveset. You have like this staff and you can really switch things up with different stances and abilities, and I'm really curious to see how this one shakes out. I know that there's a lot of anticipation behind this one. Apparently it's the most wishlisted game on Steam currently, which is pretty incredible, and I hope that this is one of the next great Souls likes. I mean, Stellar Blade was pretty good, and I'm hoping this one, it's even better. I've never heard of this developer or publisher, so I'm assuming this game is either their first or one of their first games. I wish the best for them. I will be probably checking it out. I love Souls likes and I've already played a few good ones this year, might as well add another to the list. And so our next game is another action RPG, it is Visions of Mana, releasing on August 29th for PS4, 5, Xbox, and PC. 
So this is the first mainline mana game since Dawn of Mana in 2006, and I will be blunt with you, I have never played any of these games. Secret of Mana, Trials of Mana, I've certainly bought some of the mana games, but I've never actually played any of them. This will be the first one I try, and it's looking pretty cool. I really love the art style, and they really are building on what Trials of Mana has, and as for the gameplay, it seems to be an action role-playing game like the other ones with some real-time combat, with multiple characters and abilities, and yeah, the combat, it actually looks pretty solid. There's not an open world in this game, rather the semi-open worlds, I guess there's like just some big open zones you can explore, and that's fine with me, not every RPG needs to be some big open world. This will probably feel refreshing since it's not open world. I'm hoping it's another one of those Square Enix bangers, especially without there being a new mana game in so long. I'm really hoping this is a return to form and really reinvigorates the series, brings interest back to it. Much more than, say, the Valkyrie game did a few years ago. I'm hoping this one, yeah, it's a really good one. And yeah, August 29th, that's pretty soon, actually. We'll be playing it sooner than later. And then coming out literally one day later on August 30th, Star Wars Outlaws is finally releasing. I certainly remember when this game was announced, it was announced as the first big AAA Star Wars game that was not by EA, and yeah, that's absolutely still the case, and I'm pretty excited for it, I mean, it's Ubisoft, and their games, and really the company as a whole, certainly do have their issues, but the game does look solid enough, sure there's a bunch of pre-order, microtransaction, mission, season pass, bullshit, all the stuff we really hate and don't want to see in a single player game, yeah, it's been infested into this game, but when it comes down to the core game, yeah, what we've seen actually does look pretty decent. Some of the previews I've heard about it are decent enough. Sure, it is a big open world Star Wars game, and so it could be really, really great. It could also not be so great. I'm just excited you're not a Jedi. I feel like every Star Wars game you're a Jedi, at least for the last like 10 years, and so not being a Jedi is pretty cool. We've also heard that this game is supposed to be like really open, and yeah, Ubisoft open world games are usually pretty open. They're open and full of nonsense and bullshit to do. Hopefully this feels feels a bit more meaningful and the open world is actually well developed. I'm curious how the story's gonna be, it could be really good or it could be like most Ubisoft games and be kind of forgettable and at worst cringe. But either way, you will catch me playing this game at the end of August because I do like most Star Wars things and I sometimes can't help myself with Ubisoft titles. And then another game we've been waiting a long time for that's finally coming out is Stalker 2. It'll be releasing on September 5th for PC and Xbox. I've been waiting a long ass time for this one. I feel like they announced it many years ago, but there's been several delays. There's the whole issue with Russia and Ukraine, and it makes sense why it's taken so long. But the wait has definitely been hurting. I've been really wanting to play this game for quite some time. I love the Stalker series, especially that first one, Shadow of Chernobyl. I played the shit out of that one in high school. I really do enjoy it in this game it's looking pretty awesome graphically it looks incredible it looks really good and the gameplay is looking really solid it's looking like what made the older stalker games so good where it's just incredibly immersive and you're just dropped into this weird zone where there's all these anomalies and warring factions and creatures and yeah it doesn't sound as original like it did back in, you know, 2007 when that initial game released and then the subsequent games, but I still think the game will have a very unique, distinct personality, and I think it totally has the potential to be just as good as the other Stalker games, and outside of Clear Sky, that's a pretty high bar. I mean, Stalker's a relatively underrated series. I'm sure this game will probably end up on those lists of, like, games you didn't play from 2024, but if you like shooters, if you like the Metro series in particular, I think you're gonna like this one. I got high hopes for it. And then literally just one day later on September 6th, we are getting Astrobot exclusively on PS5. I've been looking forward to this one for quite some time. I really loved Astro's Playroom, the PS5 tech demo game. I thought it was just fantastic and we really should have gotten a full version of it. And this, this is that. It's a full game. It looks to be much, much bigger than what that original game was. It still is leaning heavily on PlayStation's past. It still looks incredible. Like graphically, this looks incredible and I think it's gonna be a great 3D platformer. This is easily one of my most anticipated games of the year when I heard about it when I was working at SIE. Man, I was hella excited. Obviously couldn't say anything, I can now, and I can say that yeah, it looks incredible. Trust me, it really looks great and I think people are really gonna enjoy it. If you like 3D platformers, this should be on your radar. I know people are saying like, this is Sony's response to Mario. I don't think there's ever going to be a real response to Mario. I mean, not even Sonic was really, so there's that, but I think this is gonna be one of, if not not the best 3D platformer of the year. Like there's not a lot of AAA 3D platformers, but we got this coming and 
yeah, it just looks incredible. Oh yeah, and then all you nerds that want Bloodborne, well, here it is, Bloodborne is in the game. This is exactly what you all wanted, right? And then the next game coming out that I'm interested in is Warhammer Space Marine 2, releasing for all modern platforms September 9th. And I'm just kind of surprised we're getting this game at all. I very much remember when the first Space Marine came out 10 plus years ago, and I thought it was pretty decent to good, but I don't think it sold all that well, and Warhammer was nowhere near as popular as it is nowadays. So yeah, I'm just surprised we're getting a second one, but it is a welcome surprise. This game looks incredible. Like the graphics are really good, but like there is just so many enemies on screen it's not even funny there's just dozens and dozens of these creatures on here and you're just ripping them apart you're just shredding them gunning them down the gameplay it looks really solid it looks refined it looks polished and i think it's going to be an incredibly satisfying game the first game is incredibly satisfying this it looks even better. The whole game is in co-op as well, and it looks like it's going to pay a lot of homage to other Warhammer lore and story and all of that. It's just looking like a really great time. I love games like these. It's pretty rare, I feel like, where we get anything like this in the AAA scene nowadays. This game looks like just a ton of fun. A big mindless dumb shooter where you also get to just slash away at all these creatures. There's even the PvP mode, which is coming back. Am I going to play it? I'm going to play it as much as I did in the original game, i.e. not at all. But this is one game that I absolutely will be checking out. It looks like the kind of mindless game I have been craving for quite some time now. And another game I've been looking forward to for quite some time is actually the new Test Drive Unlimited, Solar Crown, releasing for PC, PS5, and Xbox on September 12th. Now, Test Drive Unlimited has not had a game in quite some time. Test Drive in general has not had a game in over 10 years, and so I'm really curious how it shapes out in the modern era. But this game, it's looking pretty interesting. I know a lot of people and a lot of the comments are saying this is just Forza Horizon that we have at home, and yeah, it does have a lot of comparisons to Forza Horizon. The structure of the game does seem very similar to Forza Horizon, how it's constantly online, there's other people driving around and you'll do events, and I mean, that's not the end of the world. It can be kind of like Forza Horizon you know there was the crew Motorfest last year which people said the exact same thing about and I thought that game was actually pretty good what I'm more curious about is to see how the game feels and handles and then I really want to see that one-to-one -one recreation of Hong Kong how many games are in Hong Kong it's pretty rare and so when one shows up I check it out I'm gonna be checking out this game it's like the only upcoming driving game that I'm interested in and I hope it's just as good as the older Test Drive Unlimited games. And so our next game is Funko Fusion. Now I am very shaky on this game, as in I have no idea if it's gonna be any good at all. Like out of all the games on this list, I'm the shakiest on this one. It is developed by 1010 Games and it's releasing September 13th for all platforms, even last gen. And yeah, I am really unsure about this one. Like it could be decent, it could be a fun little license game, but it could be absolutely awful also. And the trailers really have given me a lot of hope once i saw the gameplay like in that nintendo direct i was just like this looks kind of soulless it doesn't look great but you know it still could be decent little co-op fun maybe a few hours of fun it was developed by people who formerly made lego games it looks like a lego game and at first i was like oh maybe this is the spiritual successor to like lego dimensions now yeah, I'm not so sure. This is one of those wait and see games. I mean, it could totally be one of the worst games of the year, but it could also be a fun little surprise. It has a bunch of different intellectual properties like there's Five Nights at Freddy's, there's Back to the Future, Jaws, Jurassic Park, Knight Rider, Megan, The Mummy, Nope, Scott Pilgrim, Shaun of the Dead, The Thing, The Walking Dead. There's a lot of shit here. And when it comes to the gameplay, yeah, it does look like it plays like the modern LEGO games, which is good. I mean, those are good games. They're not the most deep games, but I always will love the LEGO games. And so this one I'm optimistic about, but it could totally be awful. And so our next game is a recently announced one, and that is The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. This I did not see coming at all, but I am very pleasantly surprised by it. So this is the latest 2D Zelda game. There hasn't been a 2D Zelda game in quite some time. There was the Link's Awakening remake, but an actual new 2D Zelda game, yeah, it's been a minute, and this looks very interesting. It has the same art style as the Link's Awakening remake, which I thought looked great, but the big thing is you actually play as Zelda. You don't play as Link here. And she has this rod that allows her to spawn things, like they show her spawning tables and beds and just doing a lot of creative problem solving. And I actually think this looks really cool. I know some people are like, I want to see Zelda with a sword, but 
I think this looks really sick. It feels like they took Breath of the Wild's puzzle solving and put it into a 2D Zelda game and I think that's really cool. Again, I like the art style, I think the game, it already looks great. It's coming to Switch September 26 and I'm surprised that there really is a new Legend of Zelda coming out at the end of this year. I thought for sure we were done with Zelda on the Switch. Maybe we'd get like the Twilight Princess HD or Wind Waker HD, but no, we have a brand new game, which I just did not expect this very welcome surprise. I am quite excited for this one. And so here we have a remake. We have the Silent Hill 2 remake releasing October 8th for PS5 and PC. Now I'm pretty skeptical of this game as many, many other people are, but I am hopeful. I am optimistic about it. And I think that it will be at the very least decent. I mean, they showed off some real solid gameplay, like 20, 30 minutes of it. And that actually looked pretty good. I thought that was rather solid and better than the trailers they've been showing. The trailers have just kind of been all over the place. But I also think it doesn't really matter what they show and it really doesn't matter how good the game is. There are people that are going to just dislike this remake from the get go. I mean, Silent Hill 2 is one of the most beloved games of all time. It's my favorite of the Silent Hill games. It's one of my favorite video games of all time. Like it's just such a good game. The story, the world, the music, the atmosphere, it's all just peak. It's really good. And then the gameplay is, you know, it's there. It's decent enough. This remake, who knows if they'll be able to capture any of that magic. I mean, it's a remake. And if you played the original, you're not going to be able to have that same experience since you already know what happens. You already know some of the set pieces. And I mean, I really doubt they're going to change all that much. At least the combat does look a little better. I mean, it was pretty wonky in the original. Again, I'm optimistic for this one. I don't know if it's going to be anything beyond okay, but I'd love to see this be a faithful, excellent remake. Is that going to happen? There's really no way to know with Blooper and Konami both being big question marks. I mean, Blooper, they, they've had some good games. Konami uh, less so lately, but I feel like I'm a little bit more excited for this than the MGS3 remake. But to be honest, I'm not really all that excited about either of them because I don't think these games need remakes. The original games are so goaded. They're already peak. They can't take those away from us. And if these new remakes are just total crap, oh well, we still got the originals. I've played through Silent Hill 2 and MGS3 several times, so I'm not chomping at the bit for these remakes. I just hope they're good and they're faithful. So our next game is Metaphor Re Fantasio, and this actually looks really interesting. It's developed by Studio Zero, who worked on, you know, plenty of other Persona games, and it is published by Sega and Atlas, and I think that this is going to be one of the best RPGs of the year. It's got a really striking art style and menu, and when it really comes to the presentation, this game absolutely has it. When it comes to that gameplay also it looks like it absolutely has it being a turn-based RPG with some real-time elements I guess like this just looks really good there are going to be some social sim elements in a calendar system I guess you know like persona but it really seems like this game's kind of trying to do its own thing they've actually shown off quite a bit of this game if you want to go watch a good amount of gameplay and really understand what this game is about but I've kind of stopped watching the trailers because I don't want to know everything I want to be intrigued and sucked into this world like I was when I first played persona I imagine this game is going to be absolutely massive and take maybe even a hundred hours, who knows, maybe they've said how long it is, I'm not sure, I just know it's going to be a massive turn-based JRPG, it has a really interesting premise taking place in this like medieval fantasy world that's a quote mirror of the contemporary world, I think it's going to be pretty cool, I don't really see this one being a total bust or something, I think this is one of the safer bets if you're looking for a good RPG coming out later this year. And all I gotta say, man, is Atlas has been killing it this year. That Persona 3 remake, there's Unicorn Overlord, there's SMT 5V, now there's this. Ooh, this is the year to be an Atlas fan, that is all I'm saying. This game looks pretty good. So from one anime game to the next, we have Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, releasing October 11th for PS5, Xbox, and Steam. This is the latest Dragon Ball fighting game. It feels like it's been quite some time since a Dragon Ball fighting game. I mean, Fighter Z was just so good that it just kind of took over everything. But here we have a new 3D Dragon Ball fighting game that very much is in the Budokai Tenkaichi series, which has not had a game in a while. I haven't really messed around much with Dragon Ball fighting games outside of Fighter Z, and I'm going to check this out with an open mind. I mean, I think I might enjoy it. I like the character roster. There's just a shit ton of Gokus and Vegetas, which is pretty funny, and I guess that's just kind of the appeal of the series of the older games is that there was tons and tons of characters and it was just all the different versions of them which is it's pretty funny but in a more serious note everything we've seen so far looks pretty good like the fighting looks solid the mechanics look good and i bet it'll be relatively satisfying something else is that this game will totally get a long 
healthy life of DLC. Bandai Namco is very consistent with their Dragon Ball DLC. Every Dragon Ball game they've released over the last like 10 years has gotten DLC for years and years. Kakarot is still getting DLC. Xenoverse 2 is still getting DLC. Fighter Z is getting DLC. This game, it's going to have a long healthy life. They're going to be giving it DLC and updates for seemingly years. And so this game, you know, it might not launch with the most content, but I'm sure it will catch up to the other games in no time. As for Dragon Ball itself, I haven't watched it in quite a bit, but I'm excited for this game and really seeing what this series is all about. Maybe I'll even do like a Dragon Ball ranking or something. Maybe all the games I've played, we'll see in the future. Okay, so our next game is Super Mario Party Jamboree, releasing exclusively for the Switch on October 17th. I figured it was about that time again that we get a new Mario Party, it's like every three or four years we get one, and here it is, it's a follow up to Super Mario Party, which I didn't think was all that good to be honest. Like, it was the best Mario Party in quite a long time, but compared to the GameCube games or even Mario Party 8, yeah. I don't think it was amazing. I didn't play a ton of it, but it was still a decent time. I'm curious to see how they'll improve things from Super. They're bringing back two boards from Mario Party 1 and 2, which is an odd decision. I thought that would one day be DLC or something for Mario Party Superstars, but it is what it is. We've got seven different boards here, and with two of them being classics, we know at least two of them are going to be good. And there's going to be over 100 mini games. I'm sure most of them are going to be good. I'm curious to see how gimmicky they'll be. Maybe there'll be a bunch of weird Switch gimmick ones, or maybe they'll be pretty standard. We'll have to wait and see. They were really hyping up this 20 player Koopalathon mode, and uh, well, to be honest with you, I haven't had Nintendo Switch Online in a hot minute, but maybe I'll get it again just to check this out because 20 players, that does sound pretty interesting. I'm a Mario Party shill. I don't care how bad the game looks, I'm probably still going to buy it. I have like every Mario Party game, and it's not going to end here, so at the very least, I know I'll be checking it out. Will I play a ton of it? Well, if it's good, I'll play a ton of it, but it really remains to be seen. But I'm sending good vibes here, I hope they improve on what Super Mario Party had and kind of follow more of Mario Party Superstars, which I think was a great remake of some of the older games. And so our next game needs no introduction, it is Black Ops 6, releasing on October 25th for all platforms except the Switch, it's Call of Duty, you know what it is, you know what to expect, and the new one, yeah it's looking pretty cool. I thought Black Ops Cold War was pretty decent to good. I actually quite like the story and the campaign, and so I'm excited to see where they go with this. I think the campaign's actually going to be pretty cool. As for the multiplayer, I'll probably play it for like a week or so and then be done with it. And Zombies, yeah, I'll play that a little bit longer. What I'm more excited for is the fact that it's on Game Pass, meaning I can play it for cheap, all my friends can play it for cheap, and we don't have to worry about giving Activision $70 each. I mean, that's pretty cool. But in terms of hype or excitement for this game, I really have none. I mean, there's been a Call of duty every year the last like 20 years there's not enough time to get hype or excited i mean i know what to expect i'm gonna like the campaign i'm sure i'll play multiplayer and zombies for a few weeks and then i'll wait for the next one i know that was pretty negative more than i usually am but i mean it's cod we know what to expect with this one it's gonna sell a bazillion units even with it being on game pass it's still gonna sell like crazy and i'm sure it's gonna be a decent to great game but it's not the only game coming out on October 25th, we also have Sonic X Shadow Generations. This is the only remaster I have on this list, and that's because it looks like they're actually adding quite a bit to it. It's not just Sonic Generations. Now, a remaster of Sonic Generations is already decently exciting. That's a great game that I think just about every Sonic fan can agree is a good game. It's one of the very best Sonic games ever, but this new stuff with Shadow is really interesting. I love Shadow, I loved him in Adventure 2, and I actually do like Shadow the Hedgehog. I know it's not very good, but I still love it. And so all the love that they're giving Shadow, I think it's pretty cool. It seems like there's going to be some special levels for Shadow, and these actually look pretty decent. Then I guess there's going to be like an open zone or something for him to explore. Explore. I'm not entirely sure what there is, I just know there's going to be some shadow content, it's not just a straight remaster. And I'm glad we're getting another Sonic game to hold us over before we get hopefully Frontiers 2. I'm hoping that's what we get next year, but what we're getting this year, it's pretty cool. Again, Generations is great, this new shadow stuff. It could be very interesting, watch it hella sucks and it's the worst part of the game. I hope that's not the case, I hope it's the best part of the game because Generations was already amazing. But I'll be checking this one out, I love my Sonic. And so our next game is Life is Strange Double Exposure. I have a fun story for this game. I completely expected it to come when I was with Insomniac. I actually interviewed somebody who was working on this game and I was like, wow, a new Life is Strange game. That's pretty awesome. But what I didn't know is that it's actually a sequel to the original with Max coming back. 
And so with Max coming back, it makes me wonder why they went in the direction they did with the other Life is Strange games where they were about new characters and maybe like one character would cross over and that's it. Either way, I'm just happy Max is back. It's a real sequel. She's got a different power where there's like two dimensions and she wants to prevent her friend from getting killed. Really curious how they handle the ending of the original game. I guess you get to like choose what you wanted to happen, which is a really, again, interesting way to go about. I mean, the ending was pretty wild in Life is Strange. Life is Strange, as the title implied, was strange. It was weird and I like these games. I know that they're not for everybody and some people don't care for their writing and their pacing, but I think they tell good stories in this one. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for it, actually. This is one of my more hype games of this year, especially when it comes to narrative-based games. I think it's going to be really solid. But I also don't think it's going to win over really any new fans. I mean, if you don't like these types of games, you're probably not going to like this game. But hey, if you've never tried one of these games, now's the time to check out the original because this one, yeah, it's actually a sequel. And so here we have another game that was recently just announced, and that is Mario & Luigi Brothership, releasing exclusively for the Switch on November 7th. I absolutely did not see this coming. I figured with Alpha Dream, the original developers going away, Nintendo was just going to let it die. Maybe they'd remaster one or two of the games in the future, but no, we get a full-on brand new game. So close after Mario RPG and Paper Mario as well. I can't believe all of the main Mario RPG series have gotten entries in this game. Oh, it looks really good, actually. I love the art style and think it's a great transition, a great move from, you know, a non-HD handheld to an HD console. Like, this looks really cool. And then when it comes to the gameplay, it's Mario and Luigi gameplay. It feels like it's been so long since we got one of these games now, but it's the one where each bro is tied to a button and they have a bunch of moves where they work together and there's puzzles and platforming and I'm really excited for this. It really has been a long time since we got one of these games. They have some of the wackiest, weirdest stories of any Mario game and this game looks no different. It looks like it's going to have a unique world, unique characters, and I'm sure we're going to see a bunch more about it before it comes out, but I don't really want to watch anything. I want to be surprised. I want to go in fresh and I'm excited we've got a new Mario RPG that is not a remake since the last two were and they're excellent remakes but I'm ready for something new. I think everybody is and I think a lot of people are really happy with this one. And so our next game is one of the weirder games on this list. It is Slitterhead, releasing for modern consoles and PC on November 8th, and I just don't even really know what to make of this game, but I'm certainly intrigued. It's being developed by a bunch of people who made the original few Silent Hill games, which is why I'm excited about this game. It also makes me laugh that the initials for this game are SH as well, but... This is a very different kind of horror game from what Silent Hill had. This is not a traditional horror game. I'm not even sure if it's supposed to be really scary. It's more like it's body horror and just freaky and creepy and all over the place. And the gameplay seems pretty wild. But there's just like tons of monsters and you can take control of different people and animals and I guess monsters as well. And you get to like fight them off. I'm... I'm really not too sure actually what to make of this game. It does look kind of janky. I mean, I get it, you know, it's like indie to B level. It's not a big triple A game, but it looks a little janky. The game's probably not far from completion either, so we'll see if the finished product is super janky, but I'm curious about this game. It looks like a very different kind of game, and I'm always ready for different kinds of games. I don't need every game to be a third-person open-world shooter or whatever. I'm ready for something different. This looks like it's something different. It might be one of those hidden gems or games you didn't play from this year, or it could be a total steaming pile of crap. It's kind of a crapshoot with this one, but I'm optimistic just because of the talent behind it. I think it's going to be a very interesting game to say the least. And so our next game that we're talking about is Avowed, releasing for Xbox and PC November 12th, or at least I'm pretty sure it's releasing on November 12th. They put out like a blog post about it and it said November 12th, only for them to edit it and take that off, but I'm pretty sure it's releasing November 12th. Either way, I'm confident it's coming out this year and I'm decently excited for it. I feel like it's been a minute since we got an Obsidian RPG and while I don't love the Outer Worlds, I still know that they're incredibly talented and I can't wait to see what they've been doing for all this time. It's an interesting setting. It's, you know, kind of akin to Skyrim, but it really feels like it's doing their own thing, and it looks like it's going to be a different type of action RPG. You get to customize your character, there's combat, there's exploration. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Obsidian is really good with their writing, and so I'm really excited to see what kind of story and characters and world we get in this game. I think I'm going to be able to get very immersed into it, and I'm just hoping it's good and it's longer than The Outer Worlds. If this is like a 10-hour RPG, yeah, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I want at least, you know, 15 to 20 hours. I mean, I'm not asking for 50, 60, 100 hours like Starfield. I just, you know, want it a little longer than The Outer Worlds, which felt a little short. 
They've actually shown off quite a bit of this game now, and so you can really take a look and see if you're interested in this type of game. I think everybody should check it out since it's going to be on Game Pass Day 1, which is pretty cool. But at the end of the day, I'm optimistic that this will be one of the better RPGs of the year, and maybe the best Western RPG of the year. We'll have to wait and see on that. The money's, the money's out on that. Either way, Avowed is coming this year. I'm certain it's coming out this year, and I will absolutely be checking it out. And so here we got another remake. We have the Dragon Quest 3 remake releasing on all platforms on November 14th. Now, Dragon Quest 3 is a classic JRPG, and I've actually played it. I have not played a ton of the mainline games, but I did play the original game, and I thought it was pretty great. It's actually aged pretty decently. The story's good. The combat is good. There's a decent sense of exploration, and it isn't crazy obtuse outside of one part. And so when I saw they were remaking it, I was like, you know what? That's a good one to remake. I'm happy that they're remaking that one. Do I wish they would remake some of the later ones? Absolutely, but 3? Three, 3 is a really good one. And then we didn't hear anything for many years. This game just went totally dark, but it's finally coming out this year, and I'm quite excited for it. I think it looks really great as a remake. I mean, graphically, it looks incredible. That HD 2D is really awesome, and it's just killing it. It's how I think every game from this era should probably be remade at this point. And I really would love to see maybe like Xenogears made this way, but you know what? What we've got here is pretty awesome. It looks good. It looks like there's going to be some modern sensibilities here. Maybe they'll cut down on the grinding and a few of those obtuse parts. We'll have to wait and see. They also announced that they're going to be remaking 1 and 2 in this style, so hopefully this game is absolutely awesome and makes the game even better than it originally was. 1 and 2, I couldn't really care all that much about to be honest, but 3, again, Three's a good one, and if you've never played the original Dragon Quest 3, now is a great time to get into it. I'm sure this will be the definitive way to play it. I'd be really shocked if it's not the definitive way to play this game in the future. And I genuinely think it's going to be one of the best remakes of the year. Like, it just looks like there's a lot of time and love put into this, and I'm excited. And here we have the last game for today, and that is Assassin's Creed Shadows, which will be coming out on PS5, Xbox, and PC November 12th. Now, Assassin's Creed, like COD, doesn't really need all that much of an introduction. I mean, it's been around a very long time. Most people know what to expect, but with Assassin's Creed, it's a little different since the series did change things up with Origins. This game will be following Valhalla and will likely be just this absolutely massive action RPG with a gargantuan open world. Hopefully it's not as big as Valhalla, that game was just way too big. Odyssey was pretty big also, but what I'm really excited about is the setting. It actually does take place in Japan, you get to play as two different characters, one of them stealthy, one of them it's more like the combat of Valhalla. I'm gonna try the stealthy approach. Since it sounds like it would actually play pretty different from how Valhalla and Odyssey played, I don't know, I'm just rather interested in it, and I'm curious to see how this one will stack up against the other Assassin's Creed's. I think I need to do an updated ranking with all of the games. I mean, there's just so many Assassin's Creed games, and so when we get another one, it's hard to be truly all that excited about it, but... I'm excited for this game. It looks like it'll be a nice Ubisoft open world game where I can just play it after a long day of work, turn my brain off and just chill and follow the objective markers and sometimes that's all you need in life. There is a bunch of bullshit going around with this game though with the season pass, DLC, different editions, all that fuckery and you know that's just really upsetting because I bet the core gameplay is going to be pretty solid. Either way though, I will totally be checking it out because I am an Assassin's Creed shill. I've played way, way too many of these games. I just will never not be playing these games. So yeah, I'll play the new one. Will I like it? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see for all of these games. That is it for today. I've talked about a lot of upcoming games. I'm probably going to get all of them or the very least nearly all of them because I have issues and want to play every single game and I want to talk to you about every single game. I know these were very rough notes and it was very off the cuff, but I just wanted to share my thoughts about all these upcoming games, all these announced games, and I'm pretty excited for most of them. I'm really curious to see what happens in 2025. I think that's going to be a major year, another 2023 level size of a year. I think it's going to go crazy, but 2024 is going to have some real good ones also. It's had plenty of great games already and so we're going to just have to see if it goes down as one of the best years in gaming. If all of these games turn out to be awesome, then yeah, it absolutely would. So for today's code word, we're going with the word awesome. That means you made it to the end of the video. You're going to get a heart from me. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a good Christmas. See you all later. Bye-bye.